Wait, I didn't realize that black people knew who David Spade was. <laughs> I'm not your average black person, right? I'm sitting here with you. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, something's burning, something's burning. Something's burning. Okay, we starting the episode. One time, uh, we, uh, we lived next to the rapper YG. Oh. He lived next door to us. And one of his cars was blocking our driveway. And Leanne's like, fuck it, we'll tow him. And I was like, no, no, don't tow him. Like, right. let's reach out. I hit him up on DMs, like, see if he can move the car. She's like, no, f him, tow him. I said, no. <laughs> she goes, he's famous. I'm not worried. I don't care about him. And I go, it's not him you have to worry about. It's, yeah. it's the dude who needs to make sure that he can prove that he's worth 50 grand a year that's going <laughs> to shoot you and piss on our front it's yard. It's the dude It's always the dude that has nothing to lose. Yes. It's always, it's never like, what well, people, you consider a certain thing, well, this could cost me this part of my career, but the person that's borrowing his girlfriend's car, not bringing gas in it and leaving blunt wrappers, that's the guy that you need to worry about. It's Baby Boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> baby, baby Boy, you ever see Baby Boy? Uh-uh. It's the no. best. You ever see Baby Boy? Yeah. It's the best book. Speaking movie of, ever. should we get a booster seat for Donnell? No. <laughs> The funny thing about that, I thought about that. Right? <laughs> Should we get I, a phone book? Does no, anyone have a phone book for Donnell? No, I need some height. I feel like Cat Williams and Club Shay Shay right now. <laughs> <laughs> they know I'm coming. I know you're coming. Oh, you can't say that. Come on, let me do my Shannon Sharp impression. Oh, Cat, you can't say that. No, Cat, you can't say that. Come on, Cat, you can't say that. No, Cat, come on. Oh, no, Cat, you can't say that. Oh, no, Cat. That might have ruined my career. And the reason why I tell you that but, that's not what it was. Right, we all we, listen. We all in the podcast game. Where sometimes yes. we may offend people, and they come and attack you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been attacked by Nicki Minaj crew. That's the, the Barb's. Why? What? Be, okay, this is why. First off, there's no reason why they get upset other than I was doing a David Spade show, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they put up a picture. You comment on the picture, right? And it was a picture of. Uh, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. And I said, well, the reason why, Dad, when I tell a story, I feel like I'm in prison. I said, the reason why um, Cardi, I said, the reason why Nicki Minaj has a beef with Cardi B, because Cardi B took her shine, right? Mm -hmm. The barbers went off of me. Wait, I didn't realize that black people knew who David Spade was. <laughs> I'm not your average black person, right? I'm sitting here with you. Okay. okay? <laughs> it was awful. Uh -huh. And they didn't, they didn't like, they, they attack you with like uh, emojis. <laughs> yo, it was, yo, it, it was so funny you. because a lot of the barb. First off, I found out the barbs used to be ran by Little Nas. Little Nas was a professional troller that went in to instigate. No, stuff. I'm telling you what I know, son. <laughs> why is he? Yo, why is everybody question what the f I say in this Black History Month? Can I get some? Can, can, can we? Can I get this month? Can I get the end of this month? And then you call me at the last two days of Black History Month. You didn't give a fuck about it when it really No, it's, we know that it's Black History Month here. Bert even had grape soda in the fridge. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. We're not doing this. I this ain't it black. There's no sugar in that I shit. I thought it was weird. That's white, that's white black. No, I thought it was odd. That's white black. All right, so go back to how they attacked me with the emojis, okay, right? What emojis do they use? Unicorns. Oh, no. no. Then, then they was like this. Listen, they was- Dildo they was, horses. But, look, they was hitting me with the unicorns. Unicorns, right? And then they was putting um, clown faces. <laughs> like, they called me a unicorn clown. They put bull, uh, uh, bullseye signs, a little guns. And that wasn't enough for them to do it on their page. They found my page, and then I went to some other page, because I'm, I'm trolling, I'm reverse trolling, yeah. right? Went to the other page, they said, they said, they said, girl, and I think they were talking to dudes, right? Yeah. They, said, they, said, they said, they said, they said, girl, I found this page. Meet me over there, right? And they was going hard, like clown face for a week, for a week, all clown faces. They was doing a middle finger emoji. They was doing guns and putting prayer signs on the end of that shit. That was the beef I had with the uh with the barbs, right? I had to deal with them. Then the beehives attacked me. Those right. Beyonce's. Oh, the fucking right. trick daddy got slept. He got fucking. Beehive. He got worked by the beehive and was like, "For this is trick daddy who does not give a." F <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, you don't fuck with the beehive." <laughs> and then that's you know who was next? Who? Swifties. Oh, the Swifties. Oh, that's about. But one. I caught yeah. I calmed that down because they know I got jungle fever, so that didn't really last that long, right? I'm just telling y'all what it is. And all I had to do was quote one of my songs. They was like, "You ain't shit." And then I said, "It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me." And then that beef was done. Oh, good. Now, you just had to own it. Yeah, I had to own it. But now I'm telling you, out of all of those games, 
Cat Williams, and I called him this. He got the kitty cats. Oh no, the pussies. Uh, no, well, it's just hold a, on. His Cat Williams followers are the kitty cats. I call them the kitty cats. Oh wow. And they don't want to hear shit you gotta say. Yeah. No, 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 you, no. Anything you say, you can say I love him. Well, where's the lie? That's the whole. Yeah, you were dressed. Yeah, you. Where's the, you, that's yo. If I they don't get over this dress shit. <laughs> Yo, dude, I want to address. Know, hang on, you know, you know. The, I want to address the dress. Right? Wait, what are you the, talking about? Dude, you, know oh, about so the dress? you don't know about dresses? I'm a mom. Uh, I don't know anything anymore. Listen, uh, the biggest thing you can say to destroy a black comedian's career—not the biggest, the worst. The oh. worst thing is he wore a dress. He, you can't say that, and I'm gonna tell you. I, I'll tell you is that I think it's bullshit. Now I'm I'm gonna get attacked because now I'm a sellout. I'm listening to the white man with a white woman right here. Yeah. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just telling her what it is. Son. Yeah, no. And on top of it, he was talking that white shit in Black History Month with uh, tuna steaks in front of him. They're going to get mad about that. So. <laughs> Wait, so Kat <laughs> said that so, who wore a dress? Whitney, you should never have had you a baby. You're so in the <laughs> yesterday. I'm gone. Whitney, what? this is the biggest thing that's happened in comedy. Okay. Cat Williams. I know the Cat Williams. Fucking burned the boats. Loved it. He burned Watched the boats it. and said, Obsessed. fuck them all. Kevin Hart Cedric. sucked P. Diddy's dick. Yeah, Cedric. He didn't say that. He said that's that. That's what I read. No, he said, you got to tell him no. Oh, yeah, because Cat Williams has a virgin asshole. Right. And so. And so he's, but not only that, he, he does a great job. Because some people have virgin assholes and they want him to be. Penetrated, yeah. but he said he had to protect his. He's protecting yes. it. Cat Williams, yeah. he burned the boats, burned the bridges, sure. and he. And by the way, I have to say, like, if we're talking like, fuck everything about that. If we're talking from marketing perspective, mm -hmm. Cat Williams, I'm sure was selling OK tickets. So let's go. Oh, let's do our Cat Williams. Okay tickets, like, yeah. like maybe twelve thousand a night. Right? Can we yeah. do our version of the Cat Williams interview right now? Go. Um, uh, Joe Rogan's gay. <laughs> That's the Cat Williams I'm interview. That's, a, that's the oh, Cat Williams interview. Oh, come on, come on, Bert. You can't it. say that, Bert. Uh, you can't uh, say that, Bert. But I'm not gay. Oh, but oh, I'm not oh, gay. Oh, 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 I got a virgin asshole. Am I on Spotify? I'm not on Spotify. Okay, Everyone Bert. on Spotify has worn a dress. Okay, Bert. Oh, <laughs> Bert, you can't say that, Bert. That's what they say. You can't say that, Bert. Listen. Come on, Bert. Come on, Bert. No, now. <laughs> he, he was. It was. A, but it was a masterful marketing plan. Yeah. Oh, Cat said something about he, you. He said it was something about no. He didn't. didn't he didn't so. touch. He didn't touch Donnell or Chappelle. Love it. But he touched everyone else. Yeah, he I said did Earthquake see that. can't read. I did. They, had to make, <laughs> they had to make Earthquake read on a radio show. They had to yeah. make Earthquake read. Like, well, I mean, like, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. Uh, let's talk about man shit. Now, Earthquake's a man. I would never talk shit about Earthquake. Yeah. He's funny as fucking shit. But more importantly, he's like he is a grown man. Yeah, correct. Uh, they made him read. That I mean, that is like the most maniacal shit. It's crazy, but it's I mean, bizarre. You know how I've been through that. For you making can't me read. read? Don't okay, do so that. Just no, read the, it just, no, just no, read the, said, just read don't the, do that. No, no, just read the ingredients. I can't see the ingredients. Stop, stop, stop. I just want you to read the ingredients. Stop. No, what this is, is what I'm how saying. many cups is this full? How many cups is that? Four cups. <laughs> He can read, everybody. He can read. That was read. a number. That was That's a number. That's a new That's that was a number. Wings podcast. He has no. to do that for the lawsuits, but no. this word. What? Wait, I right there. I can't see that. Right there. <laughs> I, I really, I need glasses. I can't see that. Cholesterol. <laughs> Why you do that to a black man? <laughs> Why you put some cholesterol on a black man? I'm not going to be disrespecting on my month, son. And I'm telling you, I ain't saying it, not me. I couldn't read. The pressure. This is what I, I used to, when I was young, I was always a funny guy, right? Yeah. And worst thing, I used to, just go crazy if they was like, now it's your turn to read out loud. Mm. That's what it was pressed because oh. I've been I've been funny so much. If I stutter or miss one word, they're gonna let me have it. So yeah. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a thing of if Earthcake can read. I just read. I just think it might be the pressure of the, doing the, that in front of people. One of the funniest things ever on the internet was during the Ice Bucket Challenge. Fifty Cent said he'd donate seven hundred thousand dollars. If Floyd Mayweather could read, read a, bo a page of Harry Potter Harry with Potter. no stutters. Oh, they went hard. I couldn't do it. He's I got, couldn't do it. He's got CTE though. No, that's what. Who said oh. that? Uh, Fifty uh, Cent. Fifty Cent. Curtis. And then Floyd snapped back and said, "I'll double that bet if you could get your kid to say I love you." <laughs> <laughs> yo, black, we go hard, son. Dude, yo, fuck. Yo, well, yo, I, I yo, don't yo. ever want to fuck in. I don't want clown face emojis in my that's fucking what it comments. Was. I'm telling you, that comeback was like crazy. That's wild. So wait, our guest today, Something's Burning, Whitney Cummings, Donnell Rollins. Donnell's got a new special on Netflix. It is fucking fantastic. I watched it. 
Donnell, you're my you're you're one of my favorite human beings, but you're one of my favorite comics. Where'd you shoot the special? In New York at the um at the uh, Hard Rock at the uh, Hard Rock Hotel. Nice. But it was interesting how it all came about because a couple years ago, uh, Dave said he wanted to produce my special, right? So we shot it. I, I might have talked about this on your platform, but we we did it. We we shot it at um at the Fillmore in uh in, in North Carolina, right? And this was like right at the hills of the uh, pandemic when different um, venues still had. Pro, uh, COVID protocol, right, right. and you had to do everything. So we, the, the spot that holds 600 people, we turned away like about 400 people because they didn't have the vaccination cards or whatever. Okay. Well, so I was oh, up sure. against my wall just on that. You can imagine going in a spot and it's half filled. Mm. So we shot the first, the, the, the first, we did one stab at it and it was good. The second one, I really thought I banged it out, right? Yeah. So uh, we had announced, cause this is part of Dave Chappelle's home, t home team series. He wanted to give people, uh, opportunity that maybe uh, the industry had overlooked, yep. and his people that he believed that should have. Had speaking it's, of speaking of earthquake, that special is earthquake, incredible. Earthquake Lunel, wait, was it Lunel? It was earthquake, then on Lunel. I mean, by the way, Chappelle's got amazing taste in comic. Yeah, comics. All his favorite comics are my favorite comics too. Yeah. And I think it's so great, and it's so different than like nah, I don't want to slight anyone, but so many times you see someone pop, and then they go dot 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 presents, and it's right. just their openers. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And then, and then he just put on Chappelle puts on killers. Don't know, I've, I mean I've, I've known you for years, but you're one of my favorite fucking comics Thank in the you. world. The but going, going back to what I was saying, so we shot it. We shot. We did two stabs at it, and we had already announced that he had it, it had made variety that Earth. He's doing his hometown series. Uh, earthquake, Don Aaron Rollins is gonna be the first two out the gate, right? So I'm all excited. I'm all excited about it, right? And I'm like, we, we get in the press for it, it's coming out. And um, maybe uh, about three weeks after the announcement of the series is coming out, uh, Dave called me. I was getting ready to go on stage, and he called me. I was like, what's up, D? He said, um, don't get upset with me. He said, but I wanna shoot your special again. And you see, the, your reaction is what any comic would do. If you was like, that's the first thing you think is like, oh, was it not funny enough, mm -hmm. right? And he was like, I want to shoot it again. And I was like, why? He said, Donna, let me tell you. He said, I can put you in front of any audience, mm -hmm. right? And you will kill the audience, but it doesn't make it a great special, yeah. right? I'm like, what does that mean? Because you know, some people just, it's a joke dump. You know how to do a photo totally, dump? Totally, totally. Uh, a joke dump's the worst way to do a special. Worst way. Yeah. Special needs to have an arc, it needs to have a, needs to have a point, it needs to have a story. And 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 I and I love, I've seen some great joke dump specials right. where you just go, I remember that one joke, but yeah. I don't remember the whole thing. Yeah. And yeah. We, But the specials you remember. It should have a theme. It should have yeah. an overarching. Yeah. That's what, like, and I was like, it's kind of tough to, you know, I, I don't have a problem with constructive criticism, right? But when he, when he said that, I said, you got to tell me more. He said, well... Um, first of all, he said, we're, our back was against the wall with the COVID stuff. He said, mm -hmm. when you look at the shots, he said, it's a Ugh. lot of COVID masks. masks. That's such he a He said, bummer. so it would have automatically dated the special. And he, said, and he said, Donnie, out of everybody that I'm producing, your relationship with me on the Chappelle show, he said, my special was the most anticipated. Not saying it was going to be the funniest or anything, but mm. that connection, right? Yeah. And um, I was like, man, whatever. But then I said I had to listen because the check had already cleared. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, continue, right? He said, let's do it again. I was like, all right, whatever. A year later, we were in Napa Valley doing some shows, and he records all his shows, right? For he records them on film, all of the shows he does? Every show he does. Show. Whether it's a oh, workout, he records everything. So does the there's audience. A, there's a lot. There's a lot. No, they don't. Which he is why up. he got the yonder bag. Yeah, so he, yeah. Said, he, said, um, uh, he said, he looks at Ricky Hughes. He says, uh, Ricky, how many cameras do we have here today? She said, we got five. He looks at me, he told me, do you want to shoot your special? I said, when? He said, tomorrow. Whoa. Right? And it made me nervous for a second, but then I was like, I like the idea of doing it again with no spectacle, don't have to worry about a guest list, yeah. mm -hmm. just underground. In yeah. fact, it was only three of us that knew we were even going to try to do it. And I felt really confident no in that. Went up there, smashed the show, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, we got it. I called Robbie Pro. right? Because Robbie Pro was like, when are we going to do this special? And we were going to give it to him without them even knowing that we was... Nobody knew what was going on. Yeah. And Robbie said, I want to see it, I want to see it. Right? He was like, I want to see it. I was like, we got it, right? Dave calls me in again. I want to do it again. Jesus. I'm like, why? He said, I didn't like the production. I'm like, you're the producer. Is this self-hate? Yeah. <laughs> right? No, but there's a question when you start going, is it ever going to be good enough for you because you're my best friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, are you going to, like, when can we just... I'm yeah. going to tell you something. Both times, I wasn't excited about it. But both times, I stepped back and said, and I said, what was the problem with this one? He said... Well, um, lighting here and there's people moving around. Yeah, because you told me the night before. 
<laughs> no, but not on, but not, not on that. Like, but but because I wanted to go for a classic look. I said, let me get a microphone with a wire on it. Just give me a stool. Just yeah. give me a spot. Let's take it back to the old school, right? So he was like, there's people moving around. But I said, well, remember Richard Pryor live at Sunset Strip? One of his biggest jokes Guys, was, take, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, let's go for that. He was like, man, I'm telling you, I want to get it right. I'll say, can we handle it in post? He said, yeah, we can put it out if you want. And I said, I want. He said, but I don't think it's a good idea, right? So I was like, this is twice. And then it came to a point, I was like, are we ever going to be able to get another date? His schedule, my schedule. And I was doing a New York comedy festival. So I was like, this venue was untapped. Nobody's ever shot there before. I was like, why don't we bring the, and I looked at his schedule, he was off. I was like, why don't we do it then? And the, I, whatever they say, third time is the charm. And, and now that I look at it, and everything he said to what I have now, everything he said made sense. My, the, the jokes evolved. Yeah. My look changed. The set looked great. It's very loose. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I, like when I watched it, I was, you get nervous when you, you know comics as people. And you watch them work, you right. go, is there special gonna be like this? Yeah. Or is it gonna be them? And it it but is But I'm gonna tell you something from your first fucking joke. Yo, the first the first set I did, you know when producers come up to you like this, they look at you like this. And you know they slightly honest, they're like yeah. this. They said, um, we got what we need. You don't wanna hear that. No. You got what you what you need means. I definitely heard that post. before. Yeah. We're gonna do this. We've got it. We've got it in the we end. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, between both shows, we've got it. And then I said, exactly, and I said, you got what you needed, but I didn't get what I needed, right? Took the suit jacket off, I put a hoodie on, I burnt the candle, I smoked the joint. I was like, man, fuck this. We not doing this again. And you saw it, the, the, the vibe that I had. And when I came out, I was like this. It's game time now. Yes, uh, let's go. I mean, from the, from the, I mean, I've, I saw it with you, but I watched it by myself. It's, the, it's, it's, it's Donnell. It's, you want it to be a representation of you. The worst yeah. is when you see someone you love seeing in the clubs, you love seeing in theaters, who's so funny, who's yeah. like put in the hours, is like so, like in a flow state, and then you see their special and you see them doing a special and you're like, ah, like. Those bright lights. And I was, I was a little, I, I, I will say, the first, the first take, I was like, cause I'm thinking, I'm gonna need this, I'm gonna need this. But then, and as you know, we all know, you'll see comments that rip a club. And it goes back to what Dave said earlier. You rip a club and you know they nice. But then for some, sometimes when it's like an action, it's like, it's a whole different ball game. The best way to learn a new language, immersion. Living where the language is spoken and using it every day. But if that is not in the cards this year, you can still learn a new language the second best way, and that's with Babbel. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. My favorite thing in the world to do is get the girls and Leanne on Babbel Go on a vacation and get ready for it. It's so fun to compete with your family. I'm doing it with Tom, too. We've done it in the past, but it's so fun, and it's so easy, and it's really set up so you can have real conversations that you're going to use on vacation. Here is a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash burning. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash burning, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash burning. Rules and restrictions may apply. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer's good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees may apply. And now for some legal info. Claim. As of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRAs are available to U.S. customers in good standing. 
Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Can I get a um, fuzzy off your head? Go for it. Without can, I, can I tell you guys what I'm making? <laughs> Hold yeah. On. yeah. I am making you guys lobster mac and cheese okay. with tuna burgers. So I'm going to ground the tuna. It's high grade sushi tuna. We'll sear it on the outside. I got a mix in here. I'm going to put them in burger form with lobster mac and cheese. I was going to make gay. Don't say that. I was going to. Gay? What is gay? The gay thing. The, what's the gay mac and cheese? No, black gay men in America make that's the it, best that's potato it, that's salad it. on the planet. I was gonna, you, did you know that, Whitney? <laughs> I have dated a couple black gay men, so I do know that. Black gay men? Mm -hmm. Okay. How does that work? What do you mean? I'm glad that this is no, blending no. over. <laughs> Perfect time. Okay, and I don't know how, that's how, how it works. How does it work? Yeah. So, so did you just find out that they were gay? You find or? out later. It's tricky because rich. You find out later. You yeah. rich gay black men are very similar to gay men. There's like jewelry. There's V-necks. There's good hygiene. So it's hard to tell if they're just rich. That's why I don't take showers. No, you know what? So people know I, you're straight. Oh yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm like, hell nah, I like pussy. You know? that's, why, that's why you douse I'm yourself sorry. in whale cum. Yep. He gives me his new lotion and he's like, it's oh. it's whale cum. But, but what was it? What was that ingredient that was whale cum? Um, ambergris. Ambergris. Ambergris, yeah. Did but you it, know that uh, Donnell has a lotion? No. And it's got whale it cum in it? It makes sense. It just, and just, it, would, it would lead into the first joke kind of special. <laughs> I've never made a tuna burger, so what was all the ingredients that you put so, in? So what I'm gonna do, this is- Are you confused because it's not catfish? <laughs> <laughs> it's tuna. We've got a. You can't sauce. just go. Go. You can't. What's the sauce? It's uh. Okay. All right. Got you. And then we got. And then <laughs> we got some egg. egg. Well, one-handed egg crack. That was yeah, wild. Pretty gangster. Okay. And then uh, until we bite that shell at the end of it. <laughs> I, know, there's a, I think there's hold a beak on, in hold there. Hold on. I'm getting it out. <laughs> I got it out. And then we put some breadcrumbs in. Oh wow. Yeah, that should bind it. You know what and I then, miss? Shake that? and bake. But white people do shake and bake, black people do it different. White people, what they do is- well, you guys what, just dance. <laughs> is that what we're talking oh, come about? Come on, come on, Bert. You can't say that. You can't say we, we, you can't say we dance, Bert. No, I'm just saying, you guys go by the instruction. You don't add no other ingredients. It's just like, what's in the box? Yes. yes. Black people got to be like, nah, you got to doctor it up, bro. Put some garlic powder up in that bitch, some, some, some lemon pepper powder. You got to They be like this, yeah, I got it, but I had to do something special to it. We do something special. You guys do like this. It says, uh, it says. What is that? What is comes that? Of water. What is that about, though? Do you think that's cultural? Is that like, there has to be a comment on the thing? Because like, I know like potato salad is a big thing. Oh, it's yeah. like you cannot In the black make, community? If you can't, you cannot bring potato salad to a black uh, picnic as a white person, uh -huh. they'll light you the fuck up. So no, you can it. bring it, but don't put goddamn grapes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And raisins? artichoke hearts and raisins, raisins <laughs> and apple <laughs> chunks. That's it. Right. And put some motherfucking mayonnaise in there, man. Nobody <laughs> want potato salad with olive oil. <laughs> I'm just saying, who give a shit about German potato salad? It is true. Why? Ger but that's who created potato salad. Well, Germans? they didn't master it. Yes. Well, German potato salad is where potato salad comes from. Oh, I didn't know that. But yeah, white, that's why. I feel like white people started adding the raisins and the fruit and the cherries and oh, the dried yeah. shit. You cherries. know what I mean? Yeah, like dry. You cranberries, know, like, yeah. Yeah, cranberries. Like, I feel Dude, like. Dude, fucking grapes and chicken salad is are excellent. fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I don't want to say this. I'll tell you this. I, I won't say it to your face, but. I love potato salad with apple chunks. Do you really? That's because you don't need date white women. I didn't say that. Who said that? Wait. I never said that. Wait, what did do you, you do? Yeah, I'm counting. I'm counting the chicken. What, like, like, <laughs> what is your, like, when you, like, flirt with a white woman, what's, like, your opening line? Like, want to swing by Whole Foods? No, uh, I, I, um, I don't have an opening line. Like, do you have to have a different approach for white women? No, I, I don't have a different approach for... I would definitely need a different approach for black chicks. For yeah. sure. I'd be like, yo, what's up, shorty? <laughs> You'd have Can to like... I play against some conversation? <laughs> That was the worst black person. It was the worst black impression, but it was the best white dude doing a black impression it was a good that I've ever heard. Did you ever audition for SNL? Me, no. I've no? never auditioned for anything. Really? Yeah, I never really did anything in this business. What's the one thing you came super close on and didn't get, and now you look back and you're like, thank God I didn't get it? There was a sitcom that uh, was on CBS. It was a, what is it called? A put, put, push? put pilot. Put pilot. And uh, the guy who directed, 
uh, Van Wilder was directing it, Whit, Walt, Whit, Walt Whitman or something. It was Walt Whitman. And uh, I tested for it, I went in to test for it, and all the people at CBS knew me and they loved me. Mm -hmm. And that day, I hurt my neck. I lifted up the mattress to lie, try to lift something and I tried to hold it and I hurt my neck and I couldn't move my neck. So in the whole audition, I had to do this. And in the middle of the audition, they're like, are you hurt? It's a test. I'm testing for less than all of them. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna murder this. Chris Kattan tested for it. Gary Valentine tested for it. Okay. And Paul F. Tompkins booked it. And I, I think about that. I thank God for that every day. Yeah. So I would have turned into an actor. I would have been about like, Think about the level you were at when they wanted your type. Yeah. Broke, piss broke. Because I remember just had I, Isla, I, and and the idea, my my guarantee was uh, twenty five grand for the pilot, fifty grand per episode. That's would have changed my fucking life. Yeah, I would. And I would have never focused on comedy. I would have never focused on my pod. I never would have done a podcast. But it would have gotten canceled. I mean, don't, well, don't. no, they they booked Paul F. Tompkins. Yeah. And I and I remember going, that's the wrong guy. Like he's definitely not. So a if dad. you were in he, it, that'll it, never be a dad. But if you had been in it, it would have gone oh. forever. Oh, if I had done it, it would have gone forever. This is yeah. the kind of confidence I need. Yeah. That morning, I was looking for my watch. I had lost. I'd taken it off while I slept, I guess. And I lifted my mattress up and I put my head to hold the mattress up, <laughs> and it pulled my neck, and I couldn't move my neck for the whole Why audition. Why would your watch be under the mattress in the bed? I used to drink a lot. Hey, does anyone want a cocktail? Is it just me drinking yeah, I do beer? Tito's and tonic. T Tito's and tonic? Oh, wow. How about, hey, Donnell, how about this? Can I uh, please persuade the African-American community to try Porosos? Nope. <laughs> Fair enough, I said nope, motherfucker. Nope is different from no. Nope is like, I don't even want to revisit that. Have you, I you had a story kind of reverse of what you're saying. Um, about the the, the <laughs> I I had a story. Well, you know this is my vodka, right? <laughs> oh, I would love some of that vodka. <laughs> it's hard to get a black person to change brands, man. I'm so sorry, son. Can you guys make like? I a didn't know that was your vodka. <laughs> I would love that. But yo, Bert, it's it, I had the, the story you said about something you thought a job you really really wanted and you didn't get it and now you're happy. Auditions, you auditions, auditions yeah. I had an a, a audition experience where <laughs> I thought I completely bombed yeah. in the audition. It was for um, HBO's The Corner. I don't know if you remember The Corner. I, but I do remember The Corner. Mm. The Corner was a, The Wire. You remember HBO's oh, The Wire? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Wire was a spinoff of The Corner. Got right? it. That's right. Okay. And I was a young actor then, and I never really took acting that serious. Like, I didn't read. I wasn't like, I, I have the audition I just go to. I didn't know my lines or anything. I was just like, I could just go wing it. The role was for this guy to play heroin. He was a heroin addict, okay. right? So I went to audition. I had my lines, and I just I just drew a blank. I couldn't remember anything. I was fumbling all the lines. Cut to two, three days later, my agent called me, and it was like, Donnell, you booked it. And I was like, what? I was about to say, you were in the corner. Yeah, like, but I thought I bombed in this But audition. you were playing the heroin addict? Yeah. So when I get on set, the first thing I asked David Simon, I was like, how in the hell did I get this role? He said, well, we like the fact that you threw the lines away. And that was my interpretation was like this, I forgot the lines. Mm -hmm. And like you said, how you play a heroin addict, I didn't f go into that. I think everybody that went in there was going in like, yeah, man, that's not the person they wanted to see. Right. They wanted to see the person that wasn't high. How do you function around everybody else? And that, and, and, and I got the role like that. Because when you're high, you try to not be high. Are you trying to say if I ever did heroin? I mean, I, I've never done heroin. I've never done it. I've done oh. a lot of stuff, but heroin is that scary one. What's your, one. what's the most fun drug? You've um, done. Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> That'll fuck your life up. You'll be up three o'clock in the morning looking out the window with your dick out your pants. When was the first, time, when was the first time you smoked weed? Uh, I want to hear the story. Paint the picture. I want to know, Baltimore, 1982, you and your buddies are, are by the, the old abandoned house. No, it wasn't. It was Washington, D.C. I probably was like about 15 years old, and I always hung out with older dudes. And the weed I had then, it's not this shit that they have now. No. It's I like, quit. It was like, it was this shit that like, you had to take a, um, I know this is some old school shit, you had to take an album cover, and we had to, you had to clean the weed first. To get the seeds out. Get the seeds oh, out. You had wow. to do it, yeah, and it was just like top papers. That's how old I am. We used to get to hide it with top papers. God, man. But I marijuana that. is the I only know. thing I've that. ever had. But I, here's the, the, the weed in California right now is so strong. You guys saw me lose my mind a bit in the pandemic. Had to quit. I miss that, Whitney. You know. I miss that, Whitney. A lot you know, of people do. I gotta be honest with you. It's so my funny. My lawyers don't. 
No, it, it gives me it gives me hope for everyone's <laughs> digital footprint. Because your digital footprint was wild for wild. a second, and it's normal again. You know what's weird? Can I ask you, why was it so odd that I had blue hair? Uh, because you were alone and did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I I'll, like automatically. Did you guys think I just had become a lesbian? No, I, not at all. I thought okay. you were pretty, still very straight. I okay. just thought you were enjoying life. Okay, see, you were enjoying life. Yo, you were still doing the pandemic. Was. You like doing the pandemic when this was what I gather about your personality during the pandemic. You was really living life. I was trying. I was look. If you lived in California, especially Southern California, you believed that we were gonna die. Of that handout. Do you, you remember? And you had pool parties. I know, yeah, I was having pool parties. <laughs> you ain't about to die, cannonball! I know. Fuck it. I'm like, I'm just gonna date Tim Dillon. Um, <laughs> so, but it's uh, I started smoking LA weed and just like to go to sleep. Oh, is my yeah. microphone off or not yeah. working? Or is there a spot in the fridge I can put this? Someone that works here for me? Here's here's what I say. I promise the YouTube comments will be better if my mic is off. No, Whitney. <laughs> Whitney, let me tell you something. Your YouTube comments have always been good whether you were crazy or not. <laughs> You're fucking, you, here's the deal with, here's the thing I, the, I mean, I love about both you guys, but uh -oh. like, you guys aren't, you're not comment reading motherfuckers, you're just real people. And that's, oh, I, and I don't comments. give a fuck, I don't give a fuck, I don't read comments. I read them until they start getting fucked up. You like know, what? it's like, we love you, you're the best, you love you, fuck you. Yeah. You on Dave Chappelle's dick. And I'm like, man, fuck these punk ass Oh yeah, comments. yeah, exactly. I've been doing that you know with what? Rogan this forever. Hey, cheers. Why didn't I get to have one? What, what did uh, you, you want to this with? Why didn't I get one? Oh, I thought, because you're a mom. Hey, bro, what did you put in here? Isn't that when you tonic. start drinking? Can I try it without tonic? My vodka? Yeah. Of course. I want to taste it without the, the help of the tonic. Yeah. All right, let's put the... Hmm. I'm so in the weeds on this meal. That's pretty good. That's so good that I could just do it on ice. Yeah, it's fucking pretty yeah. great. I'm going to make the pasta first. I'm going to let it sit. I think your culinary skills stepped up from the last time I've, I've been here, so... So much you didn't even trust me to make it. Uh, make it but I'm still shocked you don't have a cooking show, and if you want one, I will fucking fund it, and we can shoot it out of this kitchen, and... and Say and less. Do you guys ever read your comments on YouTube and no. some of them? Well, like, do you ever get like read. roasted? Oh, <laughs> do you ever get roasted? And you're kind of like, that was a good one. Yeah, no, they mean they they're nasty. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I, people. I I don't want to read comments, mm -hmm. but I just want to kind of feel the climate of what's going on. Sure, sure. And it's very addictive, you know. what I'm yeah, saying? It is. Until you hit that when you start hitting the bad ones, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But. I really got to remove myself from it because they're good until be, they're not. Yeah. And then once yeah. it's like it's like I can read five good ones, and then I read one negative one, and I start fucking melting down. And I go, well, then why would I read the good ones? And it's addictive. And, and if you believe the good, you have to believe the bad. So why don't you yeah. just turn your comments off? No, I'm not gonna do that. That's a weak power move. I did, I did it on the Black Friday, not Black Friday, Black Wednesday, whatever the Black Lives Matters thing. I Why are you looking at her when you talk about me? I was looking at you. Oh, I was looking at her the right word. That's performance. That's mine. Yeah. That's supposed People to be all me. I got all of that. <laughs> Fight the power. All you know of that. when you're supposed to post a black square? <laughs> yes. yes. And I posted it, and With then no all comments. of a sudden I was like, wow, 3,000 comments. That can't be bad. <laughs> And then I was like, ha, 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 delete comments. And then they're like, this coward turned his comments oh, yeah. off. Well, so, you know, but the people are so judged on Instagram. You damn if you do, you damn if you don't. Because if you don't post, like, I, I, um, if you if, if you post too much, like, oh, he's posted a lot this week, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then if you don't post, like, yeah, he ain't said shit. So it's like, you got to do like a two post minimum or whatever. But you know is. you can auto block certain words on Instagram that what? are just, like consistent. You don't know about How do I this. auto block Nazi? <laughs> you got <laughs> like, what would your auto block words be? I had to block like whore, slut, cunt. Yeah, but you're, it's easy to be, okay. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy to be a woman or a black man, but okay. I am saying that. I would, I would block goofy. That's very hard. In the <laughs> Is black, it? Yo, goofy? you a goofy. Yeah, like, what's the, the meanest thing someone can say? For, to me, yeah, goofy. the meanest thing that you could say, and I responded to this a while ago, was you're not funny. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's gonna set me off, bro. But I'm like, what's like, an insult that's just like over the line? Like, cause I feel like I feel like me? for most women, it's like the word cunt. I feel like black why, people but identify why? with that. But why? I, like, I don't. I, I don't think so. I it's don't like the same agree. thing. Cut back to the fucking uh, Mike Epps, Shannon Sharp thing. I go gay. Okay, I would never respond to gay. I'd be like, all right. Yeah, yeah but I'm you not gay. I don't give a fuck about it. Yeah, but you got like like um. 
like black folks, we 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 um, maintain our homophobia a lot longer than white guys. Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Yeah, but it just yeah. doesn't. I it's... just I just stopped doing it ten years ago. But yeah. stop being homophobic. Yeah, it Are was you... tough. I tried. They beat me down. I couldn't do it no more. <laughs> what do you mean? I said I quit. You win. <laughs> I could I not do it. Too. I tried it, but I could not do it. I tried it. It was simple stuff like that freshen up chewing gum with the, the jelly shit in the middle. Oh, that um, was my, that was my last thing. Not gushers. That I, I call you had it, to stop eating gushers because it made you feel gay. <laughs> yeah, I call it my in the streets. They call it the bus off gum. <laughs> yeah, the bus off gum. I had to quit off after the bus off. I bit into that shit and I was like, yo, this gum I just came the way my, my in my blast. mouth. What the fuck is wrong with you gay motherfuckers? And that was it. They didn't take like they didn't like it. Straight so. women go through that too. Cunt is not offensive in our community. Okay, yeah, no, mine either. Cunt is, is what? Cunt it's not I don't offensive. Find... If you yeah. call a black chick a cunt, they'll laugh at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's I've I've said things to black women that I didn't think would uh upset them and that really upset them. Like what? Smile more. <laughs> You know what? I got a version of that, and it's offensive too. Fix your face. <laughs> yeah. Fix so your face. So those are buckshots. Yeah, yeah. Fix your face. I remember one time I, I did a joke about that. I was like, women always, women are always like this. Yeah. First off, women don't ever want to um, say that you're right. They'll say, well, I mean, you made your little point. Oh. Right. And they'll be like this, but I didn't like your tone. Yes. And I said, well, I don't. I would change my tone. If you fix your face, and this and this girl was like this, but she was like this. She said, "What's wrong with my face?" <laughs> I was like, "Just fix it." <laughs> she said, "What's wrong with my face? What's wrong with my face?" I was like, "It's broke. Fix it." <laughs> What's a fight you get into a lot in relationships? Well, the bet. I don't want to fucking ruin your special. All right, but, but no, but he's got a great. Within the first five minutes, he's got a great joke about being in a. Toxic relationship. <laughs> it's a fucking great joke. I'm not gonna ruin it. Go see him on Netflix right now. It's uh, what's the name of your special? Great day, beautiful day, new day, new day. Yeah, it's a new day. I tell you it's something. It's a new Birds day. Fly fly high. High. You know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by. You <laughs> but know like, how remember, I feel. was it Back to the Future where like the one thing you couldn't call him was like yellow, and he wasn't Asian. Don't panic. But remember, that was like the crossing the line. I don't and remember. Chicken was one of them, too. He's like, whatever you do, don't call me Chicken. Oh, it's, I just watched a movie where... Is this uh, right? I just watched A Fish Called Wanda. And if you told Kevin Klein he was stupid, he'd, be, he'd lose his fucking yeah, mind. Yeah, exactly. Like, what's your, like, third rail like Racist. That? If you call me racist, because I've made so many jokes, and then yeah. you go, he's actually a racist, it shuts me down. And I go, stop, you're not, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. fun anymore. Why so, do you get so upset about that? Because yeah. there's no comeback. You can't defend that you're not racist. You can't show that you're not so racist. So you don't you don't do like with the gay comment, you're like, oh, I got plenty of black friends. Yeah, I tried, I tried, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> Get off me. That's racist and shit, son. <laughs> Yo, I used to be mad, I used to get mad when people like, like, like I used to get mad do it. Racist, racist, racist. Yeah, then yeah. I said, you know what? I don't, I personally don't have time for all racists. Okay. <laughs> Right, I'm like, if you if you're not fucking with my paper, you're not fucking with my family. I don't care about you being a racist. Like I said, why would I care about a racist gas attendant? <laughs> How are you yeah. gonna disturb my day? I don't have time to deal with that yeah, shit. Yeah, just get your electric car. Yeah. Could you stop it? <laughs> you're a fucking mom now. <laughs> You do Isn't feel mommy, weird? though. Isn't you feel weird? mommy. I feel it, too. I feel it, too. I called you the other day, right? Oh, yeah? And we missed each other, right? And this, <laughs> was, the, this was a question. <laughs> this, is, this, is what, this is a question I wanted to ask you, and I didn't get a chance to ask you that, okay. right? I wanted to ask you, like, how does momhood feel to you? And do you, this is a, this is a tough question, do you feel as successful as you were and are, do you feel like being a mom, do you think that that completed you? Ooh, good question, Donnell. I mean, I can't say no, obviously, but um. Do you just? Feel I like couldn't you're... say no, but the answer is yes. Yeah. Very much so. I mean, I was talking to Bert about this earlier. Like, female comedians, if they don't have kids, we have to become like activists. So I feel saving shit too, right? Yes. You were saving shit before. Though, I know right? I was. Yeah, it was I'm bad. Horses, you dogs. was built to be a mom. You were saving shit. I was running around like saving giraffes and dogs and other comics. But no black people. But continue. <laughs> I seen those poo bars. <laughs> you wanted me to help you with your quota. That shit was there. <laughs>
You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. With Zone Deals, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for big savings. Let me tell you something. We use Game Time all the time. Isla and I, Isla's really into seeing music. But with my schedule, I never know where I'm going to be or when I'm going to be. So when I'm home, Isla will just hop on Game Time and be like, Dad, real quick, five-finger death punch. And you're like, boom. So easy that we have to second-guess ourselves. Like, did we do this right? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. With Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Burning for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code B U R N I N G for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. This show is sponsored by DraftKings. Tournament time is officially here, so fill out your bracket and place your bets on who you think will rise to the top. With my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook right now, all new customers who bet $5 will get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using my code Burning the crown is yours. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive 150 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings, same game parlay for a shot at even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same game, including total points scored, number of rebounds by your favorite players, and more. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the action and all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot to win big cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my robot promo code BURNING and bet just $5 on any wager and get 150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BURNING on DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, so I love, I, I feel like having a child has made me more present. I was so happy for you. Thank you. Because I'm not, I'm not I, 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 I just like this. I'm not saying that there's something missing in your life, but I just felt, I'm telling you, I just felt like there was something that you would enjoy because all the, all the love that you have for people and then they shit on you and everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this, this motherfucker needs somebody to give her unconditional love. Aww. You know what I mean? Well, that's dog. She's been raising, yeah. like when you went to her house during the pandemic, there were fucking 20 people there at all times that she was raising. I know. Yeah, like it, raising it's, adults. It's your energy. You've always had that energy. I mean, I, uh, not to get too schmoopy or, and deep, but you kind of mothered your mom into the next life. That's correct. I mean. That's correct. I probably ke kept her alive a little too long, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I was mothering my parents for a long time. But yeah, I think for me, I, I think comics, like, I mean, Bert, you're so kind of comically traditional in the way that sort of like your marriages and stuff. But I was like, oh, I think I have to have a husband before I had a kid. Like I was waiting for that order. And I was like, I don't. Black. I would think, yeah. I, I'm telling you, well, most of they, when I had a baby, they say, like, when are you gonna get married? I got the baby, that's black marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we have a baby. <laughs> That's black marriage. Baby! Connected forever. Have you been engaged even? No, I got close to it. Yeah? What happened? Yeah. Um, COVID. COVID. I started learning these mental health words. I was like, fuck that. You started learning mental health words. Yeah, like like uh, 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 gaslighting, boundaries, okay. and all that type of stuff. Okay. And I was like, I don't know if this, I don't know if it was, for, it was for me. And let me ask you, the gaslighting and all the mental health terms, was she accusing you of doing those things? Yeah. And this was- That's wild. No, what it was was because she knew that I didn't know what these words meant. Yeah. So I didn't have no dent. People, if she would say something, I'd be like, fuck it then. People throw these words around a lot now. Like girls will say like, he gaslit me, he love bombed me. Monkey He's branch, I found monkey branch. You know what, what? monkey branch No. Monkey that branch. might be just you guys. Monkey, you don't know what monkey branch is? It sounds Never racist. Heard it. it. It sounds racist. Sounds it's very fun. racist. No, monkey branch, Google the shit. Monkey branch is when somebody supports, this is my definition. When Wait, hold somebody on. Is supports it yours or the, the <laughs> definition? Getting your next relationship set up before dumping your current. Oh, that's monkey what branch? I, yeah, that's what oh, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that will happen to you one day, Leanne. Uh, <laughs> it's like going from one relationship to another and not leaving the other one until you know you have yeah. another person secured. Yeah, yeah. I'm monkey branch my whole fucking life. Isn't that just called cheating? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, it's I get a it. monkey branch. Did There's you cheat on me? I branched you. A, a monkey <laughs> branch. I do feel like people throw around these terms now, these like psychology terms, as kind of like a way, like what you said about race, is to like end the conversation. There's no way to come back. When someone says like you're gaslighting me, there's nothing you can say that's not gonna feed into you seeming like you're being gaslighted. And you're gaslit. Yeah, like you can't win that. But you another can't. I no. hear like a lot of people say like you love bombed me. When women accuse men of love bombing them, is like didn't we just used to like he was into you and then he got to know you and stopped yeah, liking love, you? They love to be love bombed until they get upset about something. But do guys go into relationships going, I only want to be in love for a couple months and then bounce? Well, yeah, it's like it's like getting in someone's pants is better than fucking them all the time. What? Getting in someone's pants is so much. Married fun. guy. No, but like get no getting in someone's pants is my the best part of the the moment you'll have is when you go to unbutton her pants and she doesn't stop you and you go. For Leanne, it's a first kiss. Yeah, pants haven't had buttons in a while, so this is uh, No. <laughs> what? It's when you go to take their trousers off. <laughs> so when you pull down their bloomers. No, but like Leanne one time said to me, the one thing that she was gonna miss the most out of being married was first kisses. And I had a hard um, time understanding that because I don't like a first kiss. I, I don't, me I would, either. There's so much energy and nervousness. You know what I hate when you get teeth on teeth in a first kiss? Never been there. But never? Never. Not I've, once. I've, I've only kissed a handful of fucking chicks. I thought that was a. Did you do you ever get teeth on teeth in a first kiss? No, I. That, what? Uh, well, not, well, when I started dating white chicks, it was easier because the lips were a lot different. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh boy, my black car is gone. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Is that why we get along? Because my yeah, yeah, that's my that's a straight shot. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's fucking brilliant. That's fucking brilliant. His new Netflix special, <laughs> New Day, streaming on Netflix right now. It might be a new career. I'm about Check to work on Amazon after this. <laughs> Don't you think it's a lot of pressure to have to initiate a first kiss? I see why women will miss doing a first kiss, but for guys, it seems like so much pressure. Because It's terrifying. Been, it's terrifying. How do you know when you can go I in? I never did. There's girls that think I'm gay to this day. Because you didn't. I didn't do it. Huh. I wouldn't do it. But, but I used to be a nice kid. And the reason why, I love, well, in the black, I lost, I lost my virginity at a later age. Okay, like what age? 17. Okay. Well, in the black For, community, that's yeah, like yeah, 100. I, I was supposed to have two kids. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to have two kids by now. And I was like a dope kisser because I would, oh, this is what I used to always do. I, and I was afraid to have sex. I'll be honest, right? Why? I don't know, because I didn't know if I. You're pregnant so quick. I didn't know. I didn't know if I was good, because I've never had experience. I didn't know. So I would like, but up, boy, on the kiss side, I was the shit. I used, they used to be like, oh, I know he can do it, right? And what I used to do to get out of house, I used to be like this. All right, look, you know, if you think we're going too far, let me know. I don't want to force you into anything you don't want to do, right? Mm. And for the most part, these girls are like, okay, you're right. I don't want to do anything. But I met, I met this one girl. She was like, no, you ain't said shit. I got nervous as shit. I was like, what the fuck do you do now? But I was a kid, so they just knew I was nice, but I had no experience. Mm. And the first time I got it popping, I fell in love with this girl. I was writing her notes. Oh. Getting balloons and shit like that. Okay. Writing poems, like, together forever equals success. And I was just being all romantic and shit. I was like, this chick love me. And then when that, this is when you know it's not the right chick or she might not feel the same way. Cause I would share these thoughts with my friends and they'd be like, they'd be, I'd be like, what you think about so-and-so? They'd be like this. Whatever a dude does like this, it's something he don't want to tell you. And he was like, they were like this, I don't know. And I didn't, when you think you're in love, you ignore that, right? Come to find out this chick that I lost my virginity to, um, she just was a jump off. A jumper? Jump off. What's a jump off? A jump off is a person that's in a lot of sexual relationships with no commitment to love or anything. It's like a uh, monkey brancher who doesn't look for the next branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got they it. just fucking... Yeah, they like to fuck. Okay. And that's cool, but not for your, you know... So she was sleeping with other people? My friends. Oh! Yeah. Oh, your friends? That sucks. I've she had was that happen. A, she was, as they say, about that life, and she was for the streets. Oh, no. Yeah. How's she doing now? Fuck, I mean... I don't think she's doing as good as I am. Okay. <laughs> she's definitely not doing as good as he you is. Know, I, how do you know when you're in love? How do I know I'm in love when Smiles. I don't want to fuck anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Tunnel that's vision. It? Yep, that's it. that's it. 
Yeah, but that's uh, yeah. But but uh, here's the thing that the interesting thing about that is like. I want to talk oh, about the television. Streets. Television. Can we talk about the streets? Yeah, let's get yeah. back. Oh, to, I'm just joking. Go ahead. Let's get back to Cat Williams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say get back. To, oh, come on, man. He's the streets. <laughs> His. Uh, Why are we so afraid to talk shit about other comics? I'm not afraid. I just don't do it here because it's backfired. Yeah. Like I can tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you secrets all day. But the truth is, I here's the deal: is I've had shit talked about me. I talked to you guys both about someone who's talking shit about me. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts, and then and then I go, well, I wouldn't want to do that to someone. Sure. You know? And I think so, part of that too, Bert, is that nobody will really really understand your feelings. Yeah. And then people, especially in 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 in, 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 in my community. People associate everything to like, oh, you're a hater. If you just like something about somebody, yeah. like, oh, you're a hater, you're a hater, so. But I think that's something that I love so much about our community and comedy is there's this unspoken agreement. That our community? <laughs> this. My community, okay. Our comedy community. Your community is the same community as my community. No, it's a lot different. No, you have, no, no, you have, a, you have a, a different side that shows up in your community that I don't have to deal with. Yeah, like, but you know, so people always, when, like with all this stuff that's going on in my community of comedy, people are always like, it's only, only black people go at each other like that. They, no, that's they, not real. Let me tell uh, you, let me say, let me explain that. They always okay. like this. They're like this. Yeah, why is it that black people go so hard at each other? I was like, white people go just as hard, but they put it in the, under the umbrella of a roast. Yeah, that's right. Yo, they call it a roast. <laughs> I hate this motherfucker. Let's have a Whitney roast. So, so. Yeah. And then you get to know somebody's really, that's why, when we when I did your show, yeah. remember I told your people, they were like, they were like, they was like, oh, Whitney wants you to do this roast. And I was like, man, I don't roast because they take it too personal and I'm gonna get mad. And then she told me how much I said, I'll be roasting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be roasting, I'll be brazing, I'll be bra brawling. So I, and then she doubled down, she did it twice. I was like, roast the fuck out of me. <laughs> Donnell shows up to like, you know, because when you're doing a roast, there's just like a writer's room of writers just brainstorming stuff and yeah. putting a list together. I was like, Donnell, here's a list of like facts or whatever. And then he came, everyone came in and they're just like pitching jokes. Donnell came in and was like, you know that I'm going to fight you people. Like, we're going to fight after this. <laughs> but I'm telling you that. I, I, I'm but telling Donnell you, was refreshing. I'm going to tell you something. As much as, this is why I did, when I, when, when I did your roast, and they was giving me some good jokes or whatever, right? But I'm like this, I don't want to be on script where I think I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because your producer, like, I had this paperwork and I was like, wait a minute, Donnell. Or do you want to trust these jokes or do you want to trust yourself? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I threw the paper down, right? And somebody said, I knew it was going to be something special when they looked at the teleprompter and it was black. <laughs> black square. Yeah, it was just black like, square. it was just like, it was just like, <laughs> oh shit. Uh huh. The roast, when I started doing them in the beginning, it wasn't run by a comedian. Right, and right. then they had a bunch of people on that weren't comics. So it would be like a couple comedians. Joel Gallon. Joel Gallon. That was the guy. He was a motherfucker, man. He was like a he was a bad bitch. That guy knew how to. I don't. I, I'm sure he's still doing stuff, but like mm -hmm. I worked with him once. Because he used a, to do the MTV Movie he's Awards. He's a dialed in motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. He used to do all these big specials. But then, you know, in order to get ratings or whatever it was back in the day, it would be you know like me, Greg Giraldo, Jeff Ross, and then like. R.I.P. When you say somebody dead, you got to say R.I.P. Who? Oh, Giraldo. Oh, and if you say something gay, like. Don't know, I like you. Pause. LGBTQ. Pause. Right. You pause or you, you got to preface it before. If you know you're going to say some gay shit, you got to say no homo. Say the gay shit and then pause it at the I end. I thought you said yeah. no homo after. No, 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 pause no. Is the pause big is one. after. No pause homo. You know Can you give me an example? Okay, okay, so like, dude, I'm fucking loving Cameron and Mace. Pause. Pause. But right, you got and I got to catch it before he pause. Yeah. Right. Do it again. Oh, I gotta be like this. Oh, I gotta be like this. No homo, pass me them balls. No me balls. No yeah, homo. No homo. And then yeah. when I say balls, before they get to no homo, if I say, yo, you gotta, first thing, you gotta have the foresight to know pause, you gotta do it. And you can't take more than three seconds to say pause, because that makes you homo. The pause, the is, quicker the pause, the less gay but you is this are. Yeah. Well, and then, but then you gay if you knew the pause before it even got to that point. But why do you even have to say, is this- Like, like if you mid-sentence, like, the meatball pause, you be like, yo, you was waiting for the ball. Cameron's throwing a quick pauses every time. I every, I'm like, how you say know? for a pause? But why yeah. do you have to even qualify that you're not gay? Is it because you're right? Because oh. we're black! Oh. Why? Uh, we're black and we're built and born homophobic. Fucking, what the fuck are you doing? But why are people confused? Is it because you're wearing a white cashmere hoodie? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Pause.
Pause. Pomo. What, like, Pause. What are... Pause. Oh, shit. I took the other cashmere crew neck off and put another cashmere shirt on. No, he came in. I came in with the same no, shirt. He came in with but the... I wanted to be gangster to put a hood on that bitch. Stop playing with me. That is why do you look like a fancy KKK wizard? That's Take it, it son. Stop playing with me. So he comes in with like a cashmere turtleneck. I was like, oh, shit. He was recently in a TMZ fight. He's wearing a turtleneck. Is he going to court? Oh, What's my happening? God. And then I say, I don't want to wear this soft ass shit and put a cashmere hoodie on. I'm about cashmere. Shut the fuck up. I'm a cashmere motherfucker. Pause. Pause. I'm a cashmere motherfucker. Homo. Homo. No, no, no homo. No, I, well. But you know, gangster sure? would never pause. But no, also, no, if no. you're gonna. They never, you'd be like this. Yo, I like the pause. They'd be like, mm. <laughs> and. I feel like no one's just regular gay anymore. It went to trans and to like. Old school gay dudes. I miss, I miss that. I miss like a 90s gay dude. I miss a dude. dude in the steam room. Just making eye contact. <laughs> nope. Like now they're there. They now have they're pronouns. like you're in the wrong I want game old room. school, buff ass, <laughs> 1997 gay dudes <laughs> totally. with a little distended belly because <laughs> totally. of the testosterone. <laughs> and just like a like receding hairline Fuck with like yeah. the old school plugs. With like with a bar band around his thing <laughs> that says that he wasn't gay in college, but he's gay now. <laughs> yes, God, I miss Listen gay to guys. village people. Does that make you gay? No. Yeah. Well, then, but now, now, like, pause. This but, is what I uh, learned. This is what I learned. <laughs> This is what I learned what? from my um, me as retired homophobic person. <laughs> that it and now this is the evolution I, of the way we think. Mm -hmm. Nobody gives a fuck anymore. Yeah. This is when I knew that uh, things were changing. When I first found out that my brother was gay because he's my half brother. When we were younger, I didn't identify with sexuality mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just thought that my brother was. I thought my brother had all the bitches. Right. Excuse me. I thought he had that. I was, all these girls. I was like, oh, I want to. He got all the chicks, right? Yeah. And then oh, damn, uh, he's trying I, on their shoes. Right. right. And <laughs> I went into the military. I went to the military. He went to college. So, and we would see each other every other weekend and that type of stuff. So, part of my young adult life, I wasn't around him, mm -hmm. right? So, I remember one time when I first moved to LA, I was at um, the Hollywood Improv, and he came with this guy, right? And he he, and they did they 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 watched my show and everything. Right, and at the end of it, my brother felt like he had to get something off his chest. And he was like, this is how my brother told He said, he said, you see that guy right there? That's oh, right. I love this guy. No, he, he's the best. So much. Yo, he's, he, he's like this. Right you see, he said, this, I knew he was going to tell me something because he got a little longer. He said, he said, you see that guy right there? I said, he said, uh, that's your brother-in-law. Right, and my dad had so many kids, I didn't know if he was, and I was in the middle of taking pictures, like, I didn't know he was trying to say it's another brother. I was like, I ain't got time for that I shit. I love that his blackness still was there and his gayness. But let me said, tell you, this said, is the brother in law. Uh -huh. But that's my like brother. Did, I'm gonna ask you a ask you a question. Yeah. That's my brother in law. Oh, it's so right? fucking I, awesome. So the, the, here's the beauty of this. My dad has so many kids. It's feel like every three years I was meeting somebody else. That's your sister, so and so, yep. right? So. When he told me that, I didn't think anything of it. I was in the middle of taking pictures. I just, it just didn't register. And then when I went home, I was like, yo, wait a minute. I think my brother just told me he was gay. Mm. So I called my father. My father, he passed away four years ago, right? Gangster motherfucker. I said, uh, I said, dad, I said, I think Chucky just told me he was gay. And then my father said, yeah, man. I knew what he was up to. Hmm. Like being gay was up to something. This is the most endearing thing you can say in the black community. He said, I knew he was up to something. He said, but he was talking about my brother's part. He said, but he's a good man. Yeah. And the fact that my dad cared more about the character yeah. of the guy that, okay, I'm gonna be real graphic. My guy, my dad cared more about the character of the guy that was fucking his son that meant a lot. And that's when I knew I was like this. You know what? Certain mm -hmm. thoughts and certain way people felt, they changed. Yeah. And that's where it's got to be. Like, I don't care. Like, it's got to be come to a point where I like just, all the other shit is bullshit. Yeah. At the end of the day, is this a good person? No, it's crazy. And I like what your dad said. It's like, I'll just say as a, as a father of two daughters who are growing up in this world, I don't give a fuck who you fuck who you date, who you kiss, just be so happy. You I get like, obsessed with the men that straight men think are hot. Like, famous men. Like, when guys like Tom Brady, he's like, super hot. Tom Brady's not hot, he's a dork. Really? 
I don't think he's hot. I think he's he would what be exhausted. Who do you Six think Super is Bowls? handsome? Like, what straight guy, like celebrity, do you think is handsome? I don't think attractive. Who? Julian Edelman's very attractive. Julian Edelman? Who's that? Yeah, he was his wide receiver. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I always think that like straight guys find different men attractive than women find attractive, and then guys find women. I can't attractive. answer that question. I would relapse on my homophobia if I answered. <laughs> By the way, I can't believe it. Yo, I'm straight down like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You know who's hot? Fucking Tyson Beckford is fucking hot. Tyson Beckford. The fact that you know who he is means you're gay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I can't acknowledge that. You should have listed an NFL player, not a male model. He's an underwear model. All right. Okay. What the streets say. Okay. Like, who's like a handsome dude? Nobody. Me. (laughs) Me. Flame and flame, motherfucker. You know that Flavor Flav, that's how I got involved in the roast, is I wrote a joke about Flavor Flav for the Flavor Flav roast, and that's what got me hired. I wrote really? the joke, Flav, you look like what Magic Johnson should look like right now. Really? Okay, now I'm, because I've been drinking, I'm getting emotional and, and whatever. Okay. You know what? I, I respect you. Your vodka has me feeling like I'm on Club Shay Shay couch. I love it. I love <laughs> Let's it. Let's go. It's truth, sir. Okay. This is what I respect about anybody who's doing this game. You can get to a certain point, but when motherfuckers start giving other people opportunities, yeah, I love that shit. I think the best thing about what we do in our job is if you're in a position where you yeah. can create opportunities for other people. Yeah, I really it's, and I think it. there's nothing better. Like, and it's weird when people give credit for it because Damn, I that's... Had to say that shit look good. It looks fucking good as a motherfucker. Oh, is this an? That's crazy. Stunning. Oh. oh, wow. Here, bud, hold on. Let me get your drinks first. Hmm. Whitney, do you want another drink? Um, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Please, Can I ask you a question? Why did you guys decide vodka instead of like a whiskey That's or? That's a great question. I agree. Uh, Tom wanted to do whiskey, and I felt like uh, we had too many friends that had whiskeys. Yeah, for why do they have a vodka? It's like I want to have more black people in my life. But you didn't flavor it, so you don't know. No, really but care I also rocked the train in Russia. It's kind of my thing. Eating better is easy. With Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals, every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. Two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. No prep, no mess meals. Just easy peasy, baby. Factor's meals are ready to heat and eat so there's no prepping, no cooking, or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash burning50 and use code burning50 to get 50% off. That's code burning50 at factormeals.com slash burning50 to get 50% off. This looks insane. So I feel like we need to The beautiful part this. is the, 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 the tuna should be medium rare. Which is perfect because it's it's high grade sushi. Why you look at me like you had like I was going to order it well done? Uh, I'm just making sure everyone knows it can be medium rare. Everybody meaning Donnell? And and that's uh, a nice knife. I wanted to cut mine in half. Here, please feel I free. I feel like I need to. I feel like that's as soon as you have a kid, you start cutting that's sandwiches. Oh. Okay. Fucking You're not going to eat that whole sandwich, are you? You don't think I can finish this whole thing? What I was saying was, I could do half that and I could do this to go because it looks that good. I mean, this is. Really, really, really good. So. That's delicious. Mac and cheese is really, really good. So. Mac and cheese is good. The, uh, try the sandwich. That burger is fire. That's so. really right? good. But is this Thousand Island dressing? Mm, mm. What is on top? Sriracha aioli. Oh. The sriracha aioli. You know, like when people have cooking shows, they don't actually eat like they're kind of like grazed so that they can still host their show. I don't. No, I'm eating. <laughs> I'm eating like I mean, a like, you should. No, they used to do one, they do the, the bite like this. <laughs> the face. No, here's the bite. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, I feel mm. like we're just mm. eating. Like, this is still a show. Mm. No, you gotta keep doing this. Mm. <laughs> mm. I wanna do a movie where I This is where, good, good. Where I die. Okay. But so I, get reincarnated, I get reincarnated in Donnell's body. Oh, shit. And my, wife, and my wife has to be married Donnell. I think she'd be the happiest I person will, alive. I, 
Mm. No, you can't say that, Bert. Come on, you can't say that. My wife likes you so much more than me. I can't stop eating this, man. I am. I mean, this is the first time I've done the show and actually eaten for real. Yeah, I fucked that last one up. You fucked what up? The salmon. Oh, when I came on with Tim really Dillon, this the really bad. salmon caviar. There's so much mayonnaise. <laughs> it's disturbing me that the whole fish. <laughs> no, it's disturbing me that the whole fish was baked in a casing of mayonnaise. And just look, just look. Can you get a close up on this? <laughs> this is all mayonnaise. Look at this. This is just mayonnaise. I'm fucking crying, laughing. But this one was good. And by the way, don't is... throw out the mac and cheese. We'll eat it tomorrow. Oh, this you're is, definitely eating that tomorrow. I feel like damn this is fun. legitimately delicious. It is. That's all I wanted to hear. I didn't want to tell you that, but you had to hear it, but it was good. Guys, congratulations on the new special. It's the a baby, new day, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I'm feeling good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great episode, everybody. Something's burning. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.